Today we're looking at an everyday common item that everybody should have at least a couple of that can carry some incredibly high value. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some everyday types of items that can carry some horrendously high value if you know what to look for. Now we're going to talk today about belts and buckles, and I've got a few here just to give you an example. But we're going to show you some that you will be able to run into if you dig for them. So this right here is a World War II Russian soldier's belt and buckle, all original, the whole works, leather belt. It has a steel or nickel belt buckle with a finish on it. This is original from World War II. Now, I myself look specifically for old military, fraternal, government-related, even if they're foreign countries or not. I love these sorts of things. Now, this one's from the Spanish-American War. This is a U.S. Navy belt and buckle. It's a faux two-piece tongue and wreath style. It's made to look like an older style, but this is assuredly from that time frame. I run into them for pretty much all types of things. Now here's an 1870s town musician's belt and buckle. I actually have the entire uniform for this one here, um, but this is a very unique design. The arch top on it here, you can tell it's got some wear, some age. This is a dress one because of the white, obviously. Here's another one from this local area here. This is a Faterna one. It says commandery. Um, it's from Toledo, local area. Things like this I pick up fairly regularly. Now this is a fraternal piece, as I said. Now this is a well-marked one. It actually has the owner's name. I'm not going to show you the last name, but the owner's full name is on here, as well as some other information about them. Now I do run into, obviously, other types, such as this Victorian fine blue leather two-piece belt sash buckle here. I love belts and buckles in general, as long as they're vintage or something neat or collectible. I've sold a ton for some very good money. Now I know I'm mostly showing vintage style here as you can see, but the topic of today is going to be other types, types of belts and buckles that will be sitting out there in the open in the wild at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales that most people will assume won't carry much of a value. We're going to show you some very plain looking ones that can carry some very high value into the thousands of dollars today. Now with belts and buckles, I look for them everywhere. Thrift stores, I found some very good ones just hanging up on the racks with all the rest of the belts and buckles. It is an area that you will find some unique ones. Now these first ones I'm gonna show you here are vintage ones, just to give you an idea on the value of these sorts of items. But as we go along, you're gonna see more newer and newer ones that can still carry some extremely high value. And they look like normal ones you'd find at a department store right this very second. Now this one here is from an employee from Green Electric Company, and this is a sterling silver belt buckle. It's got the belt with it also. This one went for almost $400. One of the biggest things people aren't aware of many times are that some of these can be made out of sterling silver and actually 10 and 14 karat gold. I've even seen a platinum buckle once in my life. So there are precious metals that you will find in these. Sometimes also I have seen precious stones, rubies and diamonds embedded into the fronts of these. Most of those tend to be more of the Western and the rodeo style belts and buckles which are really fabulous just well decorated engraved design pieces now here's a really fine example that went for 510 bucks and this is from Georgia Tech and this one is sterling and 14 karat as well now, if you didn't know what the GT was, you may have missed the biggest part of this. Now, they don't have to be gold or silver or anything to carry a value to. They don't even have to be super old. It could just be the name of the maker on it. Here's a nice early Chicago Police Department belt and buckle. Interesting. All it has is a CP on it. Chicago police buttons as well have the same CP on them also. The stars would designate to me that this was a police officer's. Very interesting, very unique. It has the uh, leather frog, I guess you would say, for a baton was what it looks like. So really unique items, almost $700 on this. Now here's a more modern day one. This is tied to the Boy Scouts. This is the Order of the Arrow. Very specific belt and buckle here, made by someone very well known. It is marked, it's fine leather, it's tooled, it has the order of the arrow written on the side in the leather, it's embossed, the whole works. Just a fine example. 
example here, look at the price on this one here, well over $1,000. If you're looking at belts and buckles, you may not have a clue that that's what this is. These all go across many different genres as well. This one has multi-category interests. There's a ton of people that collect Boy Scout stuff. There's a ton of people that collect Order of the Arrows. There's a ton of people that collect belts or buckles by specific designers, collectors in general. This is a very nice, very spectacular piece here. Now here's a Civil War one. This is a Union Soldiers US belt buckle. And this is a puppy paw. As you can see on the back, the puppy paw is the actual pieces that connect up to the leather itself. Those are called puppy paws. There's some that are just arrows and the whole works. This is a very specific type of Civil War belt and buckle. It is interchangeable, so there's no 100% way to know that the leather, the belt part itself came with the buckle, but it does look to be of the age. Still a unique and nice piece here, almost $400. Now here's the opposite side during the Civil War. This is a Confederate belt and buckle. These are drastically more expensive, far less made, especially with quality such as this. This is a tongue and wreath. Like the navy belt and buckle I showed you earlier in the beginning of this video, this is a true tongue and wreath. The CS part is on the tongue, and then the wreath is there. You can see the value on this one here. It went for almost $3,500. That is typical for a Confederate authentic one with the original belt and works with it. Very fine example here. You never know where you're going to run into something like this. Many people may not understand what the CS stands for. Many people may not realize how old this is or where this is from. Now, if you're at thrift stores, these are the types you'll be looking for right here. It looks modern day, it looks new, it looks original. Again, these are the types of items that will show up at estate sales for sure, garage sales for sure, and even thrift stores, rummage sales, and church sales. These are out there. I have run into many sterling silver. I've even run into some with gold on it hanging at a thrift store. All they did is look at the basics of it. They didn't examine the belt buckle itself. It was marked. This is an honest, real area that you can find. Most people don't realize this. You can see the value on this one. This one went for over $600 because it's by the Vought company here. Very unique item. Another designer one here, this is Charlie Sample. Now this one is marked as well, and even if you didn't see the name itself, he does put an S on the buckle and other areas on there. Now the flowers you see on this one are 10 karat gold mounted on the sterling. So it's gold and sterling. There's a considerable amount of gold itself in here. But if you don't know that you don't examine this, you're going to miss that aspect. It is marked also on the back of the buckle. It is marked with his name as well as sterling. This could be tarnished black as can be, and you won't be able to read that. That's most of the time what I run into when I find these sorts of things. So people won't realize it. They'll think it's intentionally faux tarnished or something like that. These are going to be hanging at thrift stores in the racks with the other belts and buckles. That's the sort of thing that's going to make you some good money. Now here's another designer one. This is a Clint Ohms. Very, very, very well known. He did them for other folks. He did them for many different lines. Same example here, gold and silver as you can see. You got to really pay attention. You got to realize what you're looking at. Usually when there's a tip of metal at the end of a belt or buckle, you darn well better be looking at those. This one is well marked. You can see his name right there. There's probably around 50 or 60 different designers that do belts and buckles that carry a horrendously high value. You can even find some from many of these makers that aren't precious metal at all that still will carry a great value also. Just one more example here. This has turquoise all around it. Now you can find these for men and women, so it doesn't just have to be a men's belt or buckle. That is one of the key areas of this that also is missed. If you're not checking all of the belts and buckles at places, you could easily be missing something like this. This does look like faux or just fashion jewelry styles, in my opinion, and that is why people don't always grab these up. There's tons of these sorts of things out there that you could be finding if you're checking out and examining everyone closely. Now, one more thing to consider, too, is even if the leather is gone or damaged or it's ripped, you can still sell the parts, the pieces. A leather maker can easily mount these back on to anything you want. 
Many times I've trashed a belt just to get the buckle and the accoutrements that go with it. In occasion, I've also had a belt made to match the ones that I found to replace the damaged belt so that I could sell it for a little more money. Just one more example here. You don't have to have anything more than the actual buckle and main slide itself. The buckle is what you'd lock it into place in the leather, and the slide is what holds the rest of the actual flap once it goes through the buckle onto your belt. This is all you really technically need. Value-wise, it's sold for almost $400 for these pieces here. It's handmade. It's a nice piece. It's old. It's early. Now, this one here, you could have bought a off-the-shelf belt and attached it to it. You could even have bought a vintage belt that may have fit this, so at least it goes along with it much better. So many ways to make money. Money with belts and buckles they don't have to be vintage they don't have to be military police or anything else like that even everyday western wear can go for some good money buckles in general is a whole huge area that can make you a lot of money i always look out for belts buckles or the combination thereof they have made us some incredible amounts of money thousands and thousands of dollars i've made from belts and buckles just like these types here that i'm showing you today well there we have it hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends sugarless gum here tried it here both cost the same yet carefree gives you 32 percent more gum by weight than tried it and carefree's taste electrifying then the electricity i'll think about it in washington ac that's washington dc get more gum with carefree now in bubble gum too more gum carefree sugarless gum